Hello and welcome to another video. My name's David and this time I thought I'd show you the workflow that I use to reduce a full size image like this which is in layers into one that we can share on social media. Now that might be Instagram, could be Facebook or perhaps you might just want to email it to friends or family. So we're going to have a look at resizing the image. We're then going to have a look at selective sharpening before moving on to safer web. Right, let's make a start. Now this particular image comprises of these layers. And if you come down to the bottom corner here, you can see it weighs in at 100.6 megabytes in size in layers. If you were to flatten it, which I do not recommend, it would come in at 46.9 megabytes in size. Now, if you don't see these figures, just come to this uh, sideways facing arrow, click on it, you'll then get a list. It's the one right at the top. This is the one you need to tick for document size. This is what I term as being my master copy. Now I don't want to change this. I don't want to reduce the size. I don't want to flatten it. I don't want to touch it. So instead, we're going to come up to file. We're going to come down to duplicate. Now when duplicate image opens, looking at it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it. So I'm just going to go right to the end and I'm going to remove the word copy. Next, this is the important part. Make sure you put a tick in the box for duplicate merge layers only. Now we're going to click on OK. What's going to happen is we're going to get a new tab with one single layer 46.9 megabytes in size. We can head back up to this tab. This is the original, the master copy. We can close that down. That is now safely out of the way. Right, let's head back up to image. We're going to go to resize. We're going to come across to image size. Pixel dimension. Yes, you might have seen this figure before. We've also got the width, the height in pixels. Coming down to document size, we've got inches, but you might be using centimeters, millimeters, entirely up to you. But this is showing the width, the height down the bottom. We've got resolution. Mine is 300 pixels per inch. Now, if yours is showing 72 pixels per inch, leave it as it is. Your document size for your width, your height will be much greater than this, but just don't worry about it. And I'll show you the reason why in just a moment. Right, coming down to this tab here. When you click on it with a fly up menu, you have got nearest neighbor, you have got bilinear. Do not use these at all. You've also got by cubic sharper, best for reduction. Might be tempted to use this, but we're not going to. By cubic smoother, best for enlarging. In other words, if you're making your document bigger, but I don't use this. Instead, I just tend to set it to by cubic best for smooth gradients, and this does a really good job. You really can't tell the difference if you were to use one of these. So I generally just leave it set on by cubic, best for smooth gradients. We're going to reduce the document size down. Now I'm going to do this. Uh, let's just put in a figure at the top here of 2,500 pixels. That's going to reduce it down to 11.4 megabytes in size. We're going to click on OK. The image is going to zoom out a little bit, but using Command-0, Control-0, we can go back to fit on screen. Now, one thing I don't do with the master copy, I do not sharpen it. I prefer to sharpen at the finished image size. Why do I do that? Well, if I were to produce a print saying it was going to be an A3+, plus, I would sharpen it at a different amount than if I were to sharpen the image at, say, yeah, for, well, for email, which would, might even be 1024 pixels. So the difference in sharpening amounts, no, I tend to leave it till I do the finished image size. So we're now going to have a look at selective sharpening for the size we have just created. So I'm going to use Command-J, Control-J to duplicate the background layer. We're now going to head up to Enhance. We're going to come down. Now, you might want to use Unsharp Mask. My favorite has got to be this one, Adjust Sharpness. I like it because it's got a nice, big, clear dialog box. You can make it smaller. You can make it bigger. Entirely up to you. I'm just going to move it to the side a little bit. Of course, you can bring your cursor out. You can click down here. It's going to shoot across and show us the image. Right, now looking at this, what have we got? We have got Remove. Lens blur. Yes, you do not want to use Gaussian blur and you certainly don't want to use motion blur. So select lens blur. Radius. Now I'm using a radius of one pixel. 
If the image is a little bit soft, and I mean just a little bit soft, I might use 1.2. I might even push it as far as 1.4, but I certainly don't go any further. The usual amount for the uh, sharpening here is, I tend to use 76. That works really well with my camera. If I just click down, you can see the before. If I release it, there's the after. That looks pretty good. But just so we can see the effect, I'm going to take this up much higher. Let's go up to this amount here. So now when we click down, there's the before, there's the after. Preview is also ticked so you can see it happening live on the image as well. If I just untick preview, you can see there's the before, there's the after. And we're now going to click on OK. But we have sharpened every single pixel in the image, which is not what I want to do. Now, if you've got a portrait, selective sharpening works a treat. We can even use selective sharpening on an image like this. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first things first, press and hold down, Alt or Option. So press, hold down, Alt or Option. Now we're going to come up to the layer mask icon, which is this one here. Because you're holding down Alt or Option, when you click on the layer mask icon, in goes this black mask. This is the hide all mask, and you may have noticed the sharpening effect disappearing. If I press shift on the keyboard, now if I click on the mask, you can see there it is with the sharpness. Clicking down, sharpness is now switched off. Right, to reveal the image, head over to the toolbox. We're going to pick up a paintbrush. I'm going to bring it into the image. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go for, let's go for a 300 pixel, and I've got a soft edge brush. Coming down here, just make sure you have got white as the foreground color because you've got a black mask. So pressing X on the keyboard, we've now got white as the foreground color. Coming down to tool options, a few things to check out. There it is, 300 pixels. Brush settings, yes, I've noticed spacing tends to go to 25%. Take this down to 1% should that happen to you. Next thing, no, I prefer to bring it back gradually, so not 100%. Instead, I'm going to drop it down. Let's go for around about 60%. Something like that will do nicely. Folding this out of the way. Right, bringing it over the image. I'm going to click down. Let's go over the houses like this, over the reflection as well. Releasing it. And you can see that light gray area. That is why we've gone over it. It's light gray because don't forget we're at 60%. Now, if I go over this again, this time I'm going to take those houses in the background as well. Make sure I'm coming over the reflection. So bringing back something like this. There it is. You can see it's now much brighter. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to come over this area like this and just coming around. This is a great technique. If you're using on a portrait, you can bring back the eyes, you can bring back the teeth, the hair, but you can leave the skin soft, which is what you want to do. I'm just going to bring back this part of the mountain here, the reflection, something like this. Now you're probably wondering, how do I know where I've painted and where I've missed out? Well, if you press the backward slash key, that brings up this and you can see I've missed this bit here, which I'm going to leave. I'm going to go over this again just to reveal a little bit more. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush down using the left hand square bracket just to come over that area, something like this. I've also got a little bit in the center there that I've missed out on. That will do nicely. Perhaps bring him back. You can see just a faint effect around here, but I'm not going to go into the sky. Pressing the backward slash key again, and there it is. We have now selectively sharpened our image. Right, next, zoom into 100%. I'm also going to press H on the keyboard to give me back my hand tool. Right, zooming into 100% is Command or Control. Now press number one in your pop. And don't forget, we did over sharpen it. So I'm just going to reduce down the opacity. I recommend doing this anyway. Always zoom in to 100%. Just dropping down the opacity until it looks nice and crisp. You don't want it to look over sharp and just switching it off. And on you get a little bit of an idea. Just see that window there beginning to pop through. That looks pretty good, 62%. Right, Command-0, Control-0 will go to fit on screen. Next, we're going to head over to File. We're going to come down to Save for Web. Now, when Save for Web opens, we've got two images. This one on the left-hand side is our original. This one on the right-hand side is going to be the new image. Looking at it, we have got 
two different colors going on. We got this one here looks far more muted than this one over here on the right hand side. The reason being, this was an Adobe 1998 color profile. Because we're using Safer Web, it becomes a web profile, which of course is sRGB. Right, let's go over to presets. Looking at unnamed, and if we just scroll through at the very top, we have got GIFs. Now, if you've got any form of animation, you might want to use this. Now, if you've got any form of uh, transparency with your image, you might want to use a PNG. But for images, we're going to select a JPEG. I'm going to go for JPEG low, which is going to take the quality down to 10. Bringing my cursor over the image, I'm going to right click, which gives us these zoom ratios. I'm going to go to 100%. Looking at it, just clicking down, moving it across. And we're going to compare this part of our image with our image over here. And you can see this is far crisper. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come to where it says low. Let's take it right to the other extreme. We're going to go to maximum, which takes the quality up to 100%. Looking at it here and here, yeah, that certainly looks much better. But what if we drop it down to very high? Because after all, this is 2.934 megabytes in size. Well, looking at it at very high, that's dropped it down to 1.489 megabytes in size. That looks pretty good as well. What about if we drop it down to high? Looking at the quality, that looks really good. And the size has now dropped down to 874.2 kilobytes in size. Looks really good. And I must be honest, I never really do anything higher than high. I think that works with a whole range of different images. While we're here looking at it, it'll take 159 seconds to download if you're using a 56.6 kilobyte, right, okay, we're going back to the days of dial-up modem. Um, Mr. Adobe, we are now using fiber. I've got a feeling this should be updated. Right, taking a look over here at the top, we've also got progressive, which is going back once again to the days of dial-up modem. I think the whole interface here should be updated because this is where you had the thumbnail or the image, which used to download in bands just to make it a little bit... Uh, quicker I think was the word they used to use. I do use optimize. I've got a tick in the box here. If I just untick it, you will notice it's now gone to 891.7 kilobytes in size. When we tick the box here, it drops it down very slightly. Right, embed color profile. No, I don't use this. Right, it's coming down. We have got, these are the dimensions we entered. Remember it's 2,500 pixels for the width. Well, what if we want to change it? I'm going to swipe across. Now, if you were going to use this, uh, it could be for email, it could be for your camera club, digital projection, put in 1400. That looks good like that. If I click on the image itself, you can see it's now reduced it down in size a little bit. And we've now got 296.9 kilobytes in size. That looks pretty good. In fact, I'm going to click save. It's now asking me to save it somewhere. I'm going to click on save. Yes, I've already done one. So I'm going to click on replace. Off that goes. We can close this one down out of the way. We don't need that anymore. Double clicking on the desktop and I'm going to, or should I say the workspace? I'm going to go for my desktop and I'm going to open this image here, which is the one we just created. There it is. If we come to image, resize, image size, Pixel dimension of 3.56 megabytes in size, 1400 pixels on the long side. And looking down here, we got a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. That was the reason why I told you that if you had 72 pixels per inch, not to worry about it, because once you've gone through Safer Web, yes, it will change it anyway. But there it is. There is our image. We've resized it. We use selective sharpening. Now we've just used Safer Web. So go on. Give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe. Plenty more videos to come. Click that little bell icon. That way you'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.